Good afternoon. My name is Oliver Westmoreland. I am a Level 3 Registered Immigration Advisor and I am Senior Immigration Lawyer with GSM Immigration. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so you can continue to watch our extremely interesting videos about UK visa and immigration advice. Today's topic is going to be detention centres, otherwise known as immigration removal centres. I must tell you right at the beginning, this is a rather vague and nebulous subject. It's difficult to understand what the rules are. Um, let me start this in an easy sort of way. Somebody whose immigration status is not secure in one way or another might find that they get detained in a um, IRC, as they're known, or detention centre. Uh, for example, uh, example that I'm most familiar with, somebody gets arrested or apprehended by the authorities, it transpires that they've got no immigration status, uh, they get put away into one of these um, IRCs. Could happen in other circumstances. Another famous possibility, somebody's on reporting conditions, they have to report to the Home Office, they happily report to the Home Office, Home Office arrests them, detains them, and puts them into the IRC. Um, there are other possibilities as well, but those are probably the two most ones that I'm familiar with. Anyway, I say it's a nebulous subject because there are no laws about how long somebody can be detained in a detention centre. It can go on indefinitely. It can go on for easily for weeks, sometimes for months, in some cases for years. I don't think this really should happen, but experience shows that it does, that there is no law in the UK which limits how long someone can spend in a detention centre. The reason that I say it, uh, it shouldn't happen is this. There is a policy principle which the Home Office apparently accepts that someone should only be detained if there is a realistic prospect of removal. Now, there could be many reasons why there isn't any realistic prospect of removal, but according to the Home Office, Home Office's own policies, somebody should not be detained unless there is such a realistic prospect. Another thing is, and you should understand or bear in mind, it's not supposed to be a punishment to be detained. It's not like being put in prison. Uh, there are some strange, unusual cases where somebody can uh, be under immigration detention in prison, but that, that's not common. More commonly, somebody will be in IRC, Immigration Removal Centre or Detention Centre, as it's often called. It's not supposed to be a punishment. It's not like being put, you're being put in prison to be punished, aren't you? You're, you're not being punished there. You're just being held there for the time being. There's a strong, um, there's a strong current of English law that says that people should not be locked up or detained arbitrarily. You know, it's, it's a basic principle of a liberal democracy, isn't it? You can't just lock people up for no good reason. There has to be rules, there has to be principles, there has to be structure. And um, this is why this rule could be very important. If you find that you are detained, or you possibly you're a lawyer who's representing someone who's detained, it should be you should hold the Home Office to its own published rules. There must be realistic prospect of removal. If someone is in a um, detention centre for ages and ages and ages and they don't apply to get out, the Home Office is supposed to um, review their situation every now and again. Um, after 28 days in detention, the Home Office is supposed to refer their case to the First Tier Immigration Tribunal, uh, supposed to make a bail application for them. However, you don't have to wait for the Home Office to do that if, if you're in detention. You can make an application for um, immigration bail. That is an application to uh, be let out of detention. Uh, you will have condi conditions, but if you're successful in this application, you'll be let out. Um, Initially, you can, if you want to, make an application to the Home Office, a paper application to the Home Office. I think that, that the rate of success of these applications is very low. Uh, another possibility, probably a stronger one, but a more complicated one, is that you make an application to the First Tier Immigration Tribunal um, for immigration bail, i.e. to be released from detention. This is something um, a bit more complicated. It's like a, a mini appeal hearing at the tribunal. 
uh, for, uh, mercifully short, but something like it. You have an immigration judge, you have a Home Office representative, you have yourself, you have possibly a lawyer for yourself, you have possibly um, some people. They used to be called sureties. This was the, the old word that everybody understood. Um, like everything else, the Home Office has changed the vocabulary. They're now called financial condition supporters. These are people, um, hopefully you can get some, who will offer money they will show that they've got money in the bank. They will show that they work or they, they, they legitimately, legitimately get money. They will offer money to give to the Home Office if you are released and you don't follow your bail conditions. Your bail conditions most probably will be to reside at a specified address. Uh, very probably your conditions will be to report uh, on a regular basis to the Home Office possibly i don't know that this is really very common but possibly um th there might be an electronic tagging condition i don't think that's so 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 common actually um the application to the first tier tribunal to be released i think uh, my, my experience is that judges are rather can be rather hostile they look at someone's record because i mean what it's about basically the applicant promises to follow their um, their bail conditions. Some judges are very hostile. They look at the, the applicant's record and say, oh, you're not a very honest person. Are you? Look, you did this, you did that, you, 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 you absconded, you did this and that. Some of them are more flexible. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like appeals generally, but it, it comes particularly sharply. Some judges are more sympathetic than others. You can't choose your judge, really. It's like the National Lottery. But uh, these applications can be successful if you've got good um, sureties or um, financial condition supporters, as we must call them now, if you've got good convincing ones who've got, uh, it doesn't really matter how much money they've got, um, they can be rich or poor, but they have to promise an amount of money that's a lot of money to them. If somebody earns a thousand pounds a month, 500 pounds would be a lot of money for them, wouldn't it? Somebody earns uh, a million pounds a month, it, it wouldn't be. It has to be commensurate with how much people earn. But if uh, you, you can get good uh, sureties if the sureties can really convince the judge at the hearing that they will really do their best to ensure that the applicant follows the bail conditions it could be a strong application now that's the basic stuff uh, mr Shaw. i'm sure that you've, you're going to have a few questions to ask me sure thank you so much for shedding light on this um, very important topic and um, i have a few questions um, can someone with settled status um, be detained under any circumstances? Yes. Uh, let's say the person has been accused of deception in obtaining their status. Let's say uh, th th their status has been revoked by the Home Office, which is actually very easy, not, not so difficult. Settled status can be revoked. In a situation like that, you, they could end up in detention, yes. Okay. And, um, can I just add one uh, thing? A British citizen who whose status is okay cannot be detained. <laughs> do bear, do bear, bear that in mind. Great, thank you. But I mean, again, a British citizen whose citizen is looks like it's going to be revoked, then then it is a possibility, I suppose. Okay, and can someone be detained? Let's say more than one time, where they've detained, release, and can they be detained again? Yes, they can. If, if they don't follow their bail conditions, very very, very possible, uh, extremely possible. Okay. But can I just add one thing? Mm -hmm. The Home Office would like to detain 200,000 people, probably. There's only seven uh, detention centres in the UK. It's not possible to detain everyone that the Home Office wants to detain. So this is a factor. First of all, it will inhibit the Home Office from detaining somebody. Secondly, it will give more pressure, perhaps, uh, to help them uh, make a successful uh, bail application because... Whichever way it comes, there's just not, not enough room for everyone in the Home Office could detain or would like to detain. I mean, there's no rules. You know, like I said right at the beginning, anyone whose immigration status is not firm and solid, they could potentially be detained. Okay. And um, if the Home Office wants to detain women, are there different centres for, for the ladies? Uh, yes, they, there are, yeah. 
Okay. And what happens if, if the woman has a child who can't be separated from the mother? Uh, then they probably wouldn't. And also, if a woman is pregnant, I, I don't think they can detain her for more than three days. Uh, there are different rules for women and children. Okay. And let's say someone's bail was granted mm. um, and the guarantors existed. Mm. Um, however, the applicant disappears. <laughs> then what trouble are the guarantors getting into? Well, they're in the trouble. They're going to lose the money that they promised, most probably. This, this, is, this is the whole point of the system. They promise money uh, that they will have to fork out if the applicant doesn't follow their conditions. So if they disappear, as you say, which could happen, uh, then probably uh, the Home Office is going to take the money that they promised. That's why you shouldn't do it unless you are reasonably confident that, that your friend is going to um, follow the conditions. Sure. It probably wouldn't be your friend after that anyway. <laughs> and what about... Um those guarantors becoming guarantor for anybody else in the future does it affect that eligibility no, criteria? No, to be not, not, not particularly, no. Okay. If they make a career out of it, they look, might look a bit strange. <laughs> sure. And who can be a guarantor? It can be friend or it has to be a relative, close family member? Well, it'd have to be somebody who had some reason, but I mean, a friend or a family member is quite acceptable. Okay. Uh, you don't have to be a British citizen. But you do have to have solid immigration status, otherwise the thing will get out of control. Sure. And um, how long does it take for the detention centre to release the detainee once a decision to release has been made? Um, quite quick, uh, within a, a day or two. Okay. In the old days, I don't know if it happens so much nowadays, but in the old days, the Home Office had plenty of um, space to offer for applicants who didn't have anywhere to live. Nowadays, I think that that space is very, very limited. But in the old days, uh, tribunal had made a decision within a couple of days that would have been given a place uh, wherever it was. Probably still as quick, but this brings up another issue. If you haven't got anywhere to live, you can't find somebody who's going to give you somewhere to live you're going to have to rely on the Home Office finding you a place which might be difficult because there are much fewer places to spare now. Sure. And um, Don't forget, the Home Office desperately needs the space, so somebody who's been given permission to escape, that they're going to get on with it quickly so they can bring somebody else in. True. And um, can somebody visit the detainee in the detention centre? Yes, yes, there's a visitor centre a certain level of security, but they, they can be visited, yes. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for um, explaining how the detention centres work. My um, pleasure. And uh, we'll see you in the next vlog. See you next time. Goodbye, everybody.